Hi, I'm Emin. Don't go anywhere because profiles will be coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Morgan Thompson. Today's guest is worldwide recording artist Emin. Having conquered his native Russia and Europe with hit records and sold out concerts, Emin is currently taking the US by storm. His debut single, Baby Get Higher, has been climbing up the pop charts and it's currently listed at number 10. After a short break, we'll join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes singer and songwriter Emin to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. I'm Morgan Thompson. Already a household name in Europe and the UK, with six amazing albums, Emin is also finding success here in the US. His debut single, Baby Get Higher, has been surging up the pop charts. In his home country, Emin is known as the Elvis Presley of Russia. And here in the States, his sound is often compared to that of Enrique Iglesias and Michael Buble. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location from the Iroquois Hotel in the heart of New York City, as he welcomes popular singer Emin to Profiles. Just for one night. Emin, welcome to our show, Profiles. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure to be here. Of course, uh, for our viewers, you, you are a singer and uh, coming to the States, originally from Russia. And, and in that country, you are known as, correct me if I'm wrong, the Michael Blue Blay of Russia. Well, I guess because I started uh, uh, from, uh, I was a crooner, you know, seven, eight years ago when I started my musical career. and. Uh, it was uh, the love of uh, Elvis and his songs and Tom Jones and Engelbert and yes. I guess that's how I got the name. Now for our viewers, uh, as you are a singer, as you say, a crooner, uh, and a household name in Europe and, and in the UK, uh, currently uh, taking the US by storm. I just heard some promos for your new album uh, on the radio last night. Uh, with your, uh, and your American, your American debut single, Baby Get Higher, is, is climbing the charts. I got lucky. I've been in, uh, in the top 20 Billboard uh, new singles charts for six weeks now. So that's, uh, I guess, a tremendous breakthrough for, for me and for my team. And uh, we hope to, to achieve a lot more, but that's a good start. We're breaking the ice. We've done that in uh, Europe, we've done it in Britain, and you know, it's time to, to get some wind our way in the United States. Yeah, as a debut single, uh, were you surprised at its success right I, out I'm, of the I box? Still, I still am. <laughs> I'm you still, still lost. Uh, and most recently, you're celebrating the release of your first American CD uh, titled After the Thunder. What can you tell us about that CD? Well, that's my um, album number six in my musical career. And as, as, as I mentioned before, I started as a crooner, but my last two albums were completely original, all new material, so I moved away from the crooning. And, um, you know, as, as, as a singer-songwriter, I'd like to think that this is the best... Uh, the best piece of music that I've done in, in my musical career, and uh, this is my best album, and yeah. it's called After the Thunder. So. Yeah, yeah. My, my question is, uh, you've had six albums, as, you, as you've mentioned. Uh, why did you wait so long before you entered the U.S. market? Well, you know, you, you tend to concentrate on the markets where you're most successful, and obviously back at home, you know, I was... Uh, somewhat uh, doing well and um, with four albums that I uh, released previously. And then it was Britain because my yeah. production uh, came from uh, Britain with uh, Mr. Brian Rowling, an mm -hmm. incredible producer. I worked with many um, songwriters that uh, have worked with Enrique and Cher and uh, big artists before. Sure. We've written some good songs and picked up some momentum in Britain and that translated to some um, success in Europe. And uh, I guess America was a bit too far for us. 
but now we're ready and you know yeah, we think that this are, is the right album. Yeah, are you happy that you've you waited this long? I think so. Before you and 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 your music has it evolved since the beginning? The music I evolved as an artist, I think as a performer of my band and it's a learning process for everyone including me and I think uh, we're just in the perfect time. I'm ready. You're I'm, ready. I'm more mature. Very good. Now interestingly, uh, you are the heir of a billion dollar fortune. Uh, and you are the also, you're also the son-in-law of the president of? Azerbaijan. <laughs> Azerbaijan. Uh, with all of this going on in your life, uh, what motivated you to, to pursue a career as a singer? Well, um, what happened is I started singing about 15 years ago in New Jersey. I was mm -hmm. still in, in, mm -hmm. in high school uh, here when I was uh, living in America. And uh, music came before anything else came to my life, before my father became a billionaire and before I got married to the daughter of Azerbaijan president. <laughs> so it wasn't a choice I made after that happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a, a yeah. dream that uh, I pursued and uh, all the other things that happened to me in my life, you know, happened simultaneously, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, whether that would have been there or wouldn't, uh, I would pursue my musical career no matter what. Right. Now, in fact, uh, your dad, and his name is? Aris. Uh, is at the top of Forbes' rating of commercial real estate owners in Russia uh, and is frequently called the Donald Trump of Russia. Uh, is he a fan of your music? He's a critic of my music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? He's, he's what is, a, what, well, what is, how, how does he As a father, he is, he is a big critic. Well, p part, of, part of my life is obviously family business and I spent <laughs> you know, 11 years in his uh, company in, in, in Moscow. And, yeah. uh, helping a little bit with, with uh, what he has been doing there. But uh, when it concerns music, he likes to criticize me as any father would. Yeah. And I guess he's the mo most honest critic, but uh, you know, I try to keep him away from my musical business. <laughs> would and he rather I, see you in the family business as opposed to pursuing your music I mean, career? I'm, I'm, I'm there and there, so You're both. I'm, I'm both. But uh, you know, he's always had the, the great admiration for big singers. You know, he's a big fan of Tom Jones. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think he's happy that I'm singing and he's happy that I'm singing well and that I've picked, picked up some success. He's supporting, supporting. So. Also, what I found interesting about your dad uh, is that he doesn't come from money uh, and was pretty much self-made. Is that accurate? Very accurate because he was, um, he was born obviously and he grew up and studied during the Soviet era. Mm -hmm. You couldn't mm -hmm. be rich or poor, everybody was the same. Yeah. And uh, only 22, 23 years ago, Soviet Union has fallen apart. Yeah. And that's when he started his uh, first business. And, uh, you know, my childhood when I was growing up, uh, we, we weren't wealthy. And uh, he, he, you know, he lost his father when he was 14, so he didn't really have any, any help like I've had in my life. Right. So he, he is a self-made uh, uh, entrepreneur. Sure. What's the biggest lesson you've learned from his success? Um, well, I guess it's, it's not even the lesson, but it's, it's, it's the form of lifestyle. I think uh, anything and everything requires uh, work and tremendous amount of it. You have to be dedicated and only then you can hope for results. Sometimes you get a little bit lucky and, uh, you know, you get an extra push from behind but, um, to speed you up, but you can't count on it. So if, if you're not getting lucky, you need to work for it. Sure. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that outside of music, uh, that you're also uh, an experienced uh, entrepreneur and have a lot of success, especially in fashion. Is that true? Um, a little bit, yes. I've studied, <laughs> I've studied here in Manhattan. <laughs> okay, okay. I studied business, uh, management, uh, economics, and obviously I got yeah. my degree to, to pursue my business career, which I have for, yeah. for even the school years. I've, I've, I was a power seller on eBay. I had a couple <laughs> of websites here selling Russian stuff on the internet. So that was my first uh, a little bit of success here in, in the States in the business world. Mm -hmm. Then when I moved back to Moscow, I joined my uh, father's company. And yeah. uh, we've done a lot of uh, fashion-related projects, including uh, you know, the first ever store of Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Well, that was pretty big. Yeah, that was pretty big. And you know, where was that first store? That was in Crocus City Mall in one of our developments. And you know, she came for the opening. It was a, a big deal. And 10 years later, we ended up doing a concert together yeah. in Baku. Now, I'm going to talk about <laughs> that. Is, yeah.
You're leaving me breathless. I mean, in the uh, Eurovision concert that had 25,000 people in the audience, of course.